For this week's homework we're looking at properties of number and this is the aiming higher version. Any number that divides exactly into another number must be one of its factors. So, for example, 12 is a factor of 84, as is 7. Whereas 84 is a multiple of 12 and 7, because you can multiply 7 and get to 84. Now, have a look at the strategy below for finding factors. So, we know 7 times 6 is 42. So, if I want to find some more factors of 42, I can think, well, what are the factors of 6? Um, well, 2 and 3. And so therefore, 2 and 3 must be factors of 42 as well. Be because if I can count up in 6s and get to 42, I must be able to count up in 3s and get to 42 as well. See if you can use that technique to find all the factors of 54. Now, there's lots of ways you could have gone about this. I did 24 times 2, and then found all the factors of 24, and then worked out all the pairs. Well, 8, 6 is a 48. 3 times 16 is 48, 4 times 12 is 48, and of course 1 and 48 must be factors as well. And so just a quick reminder about square and prime numbers. Square numbers can be found by multiplying any number by itself. So 3, for example, isn't a square number, but 9 is. Prime numbers have only got two factors, 1 and itself. So, for example, 1 times 31 makes 31. There's no other way of multiplying to make 31. Whereas 51 is not a prime number, because actually 51 divided by 3 makes 17. You know the drill. For the first question, I know that I'm looking for numbers between 85 and 94. I can eliminate all the multiples of 5, I can eliminate all the multiples of 2, and next I'll be looking at these numbers, and probably for the multiples of 3. So I know 90 is a multiple of 3, so 87 must be as well, and 93 must be. They can't be primes. That leaves 89 and 91. Well, if I now check my 7 times table, 91 is actually a multiple of 7, because 7 times 13 is 91. That leaves 89. For the bottom question, I'll be checking the square numbers above or below that number. So, for example, 8 8s are 64, 9 9s are 81, so it can't be 72. By a similar logic, 14 squared is 196, so 200 can't be. 24 we know isn't on a similar logic, but 169 is, as it's 13 squared. Now, have a go at these two questions to finish the last one being particularly difficult. Now, for the first question, I know the numbers must be in the window 155 to 164, as when round is the nearest 10, they make 160. Now, I know that 30 times 6 is 180, so that must be a multiple of 6. If I take away 18, again, another multiple of 6, that leaves me with 162. Now, if I take away another 6, I'll have 156, which also works. So I'll need to pluralise my question. Now, I'm going to give you a little clue for the last question, if you need it. If I'm looking at the sum of the factors of 11, I know the factors of 11 are 1 and 11, because 11 is prime. So the sum of those factors must be 12. Now, if you didn't understand the question before, see if you can have a go now. Now, there's a couple of answers for this question. The most straightforward one is 23, because, of course, 23 being prime has got the factors 23 and 1, so that must have a, a sum of 24. Um, another one is 15, so I must have 1, 15, 3, and 5. If I add them together, I would probably add the 15 and the 5 to get me to 20, and then the 3 and the 1, 24. 
You'll be looking forward to more of this great maths in class next week. See you then.